Hi, thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about qualifying today. I'm honored to get to uh, talk to you about this. I'll get right to it so we don't uh, have a lot of wasted time. There are three things that I'm going to try to accomplish on this this uh, video today. The first one is that I want you to change the way that you think about qualifying a little bit. And I realize there's a couple steps, and I'll talk about those. Uh, but I want you to kind of start on that journey. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to change the way that you talk about your company, in the in which will aid us in the process of doing better job qualifying. And the third thing I'd like to do is change the way that you think about how you qualify someone and particularly how that drives referrals. So we'll get started with the uh, first one and I'll kind of move through each one of these. My name is Matthew Lampros. Our company is Cellemental, S-E-L-L-E-M-E-N-T-E-L.com. And you can always reach me at Matthew at Cellemental.com or by calling me 801-983 five nine zero zero if anything on this video doesn't make sense or you'd like to work through parts of it or because this will be a bit interactive that you will have some homework during this video if any of that requires any help on my part please reach out to me and I will absolutely um, get in touch with you and, and work it out in fact um, I'll give you my calendar app that's uh, if you go to cellemental.simplybook.me you can choose a time to talk to me. You just go ahead and pick a time, put in your email, and we'll book it on my calendar, and I'll be available to talk at that time. You'll know that that's your time and no one else's, okay? All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want you to think about um, qualifying in kind of, a, kind of a different way. Now, a lot of times when you read almost all the literature on qualifying, you talk to most sales trainers about qualifying, what they say is they want you to qualify, number one, so you get your forecasts right, which is great. But I'm in sales too, and I know you don't care nearly much as much about getting the forecast right as your boss and their boss and their boss does. So I'm not going to harp on that too much. Um, the second thing is that so that you don't waste time. Um, I get that, and they're right. You don't want to waste time, but um, it's kind of a hard jump to make. I found with my clients, you can't just say, "Hey, I want you to qualify so you can get rid of people." So let me th let you think of it this way. The first step in qualifying is being able to prioritize the deals that you have in the pipeline. I don't need I don't suggest necessarily that you get rid of deals. What I do suggest is that you look at the deals in your pipeline and you prioritize based on how qualified they are where you should spend most of your time. Now, I do think later as you get better and better at this, there are deals that you'll turn down and I applaud that and I encourage that. But for right now, I don't want to march in like a bull in a china shop right away and say, hey, I want you to dump deals that you're working because they're not qualified. What I'd rather you do is just find the ones that are really qualified and make sure that you're giving them extra attention. Make sure you're giving them attention, your sales manager's giving them attention, the general manager's giving them attention. Whatever it takes to close that deal, because it's highly qualified, by definition, it's highly likely to buy, highly likely to close. So I want you to think of this as a prioritization effort. Okay, so we'll come back to that, but that's the first thought. Now, the second thought has to do with how you talk to your customer. So I'm going to digress from um, qualifying for a minute, and I'm going to talk about your sales pitch. So your typical sales pitch, when someone says, you know, what's your elevator pitch or what's your value proposition, you'll typically talk about your company and what you have to offer, and that's good. Um, but that's what I call, or what, uh, in fact, um, others call, and I, I join the bandwagon, uh, source of value. So it's a pitch that's about where you get your value. So if you think about most sales pitches, it's things like how long you've been in business, um, that you, you have expertise, that you have this customer and that customer and that customer, this case study, this award, how good your finances are, um, these things you've been able to accomplish, the expertise of the staff, right? It's things like why and how you're good at what you are, but not really why that matters, okay? When you speak that way, the customer is automatically, the prospect, is automatically trying to translate what you're saying into something that makes sense to them. And we call that use of value, meaning a pitch about how I'll use your value or your product or your service. How am I going to use it in my business? It's better to just go out, come out and say that. 
It's better just to talk that way because when you say, oh, we have all this great experience, we've got all these trucks and we're 24 by 7, the customer's not going, oh, that's great, I'm doing business with a company that has a lot of experience. They're thinking, oh, that's great because two times a month I need to call someone at 11 at night. And so this will solve that requirement. It's better to say, you can call us at 11 o'clock at night whenever anything happens. You can call us at 2 in the morning. It's better to say, I've got Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 support. And no matter what happens, we're going to be able to solve your problem. Use of value are things like you know, lowering manufacturing costs, improving employee satisfaction, improving competitiveness, um, lowering operating costs, lowering capital costs, uh, anything to do with you know, improving the brand. These are, these are the ways that they and their business will use your product to improve their business. My first suggestion is begin to talk that way because if you don't talk that way, the customer's having to take what you said, which was source, why and how, and translate it into use. I appreciate that you've been in business for 15 years. I'm, it's great that you've been in the community that long for 30 years. That's wonderful. What does that mean to me? And they're ha they have to, in their mind, make that translation it's preferable for you to do that for them, okay? So talk to them about how they can use you, not why you're great. Then if I can get you to go one step further, I can get you to be really, really good at qualifying. There's the last kind of pitch or value, and it's called absence of value. And what absence of value is, it's, it's a way to talk about what someone's life is like in the absence of your product or service. So without your company being involved with them, what is their life like if, if you're the right company for them, right? So uh, I always use the um, pharmaceutical example. So, you know, in the absence of Lipitor, somebody who should use the drug um, has high cholesterol, um, is at risk of dying sooner than they should, is probably slowing down, can't play with their grandkids, um, you know, their insurance rates are a lot higher, so they don't have the money that they need because they haven't paid all for insurance rates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What you're looking to do with your customer, and the ultimate way to talk to your customer about your product, is talk in absence of value. So what this requires is your ability to say, well, okay, let me tell you what we do by telling you what life is like without me. <laughs> Right. Well, let me tell you what we do by telling you what problems I fix. So you've got to be able to say, okay, here's what life is like without me. With me, it's different. So absence of value would be things like, um, very. I like to do very specific things. So your tax rate on gross profit is higher than twelve percent. Um, I'm just spitballing. So these are total examples. Your utility bill per square foot is more than three dollars and eighty cents your um the number of uh issues that you've had with the compliance with the regulation that's associated with your industry uh, you've had two complaints a year and you should have zero or you should have two every 10 years um the uh, a metric like the your risk to uh revenue ratio is 2.1 and it should be 0 0.08 I like metrics because I think that you can really define those, that you can't argue them. They're salient points that we can do, use a calculator with. But they could also be other things like um, you have a high turnover rate of employees, employee satisfaction is low, you have a high turnover rate of customers, right? Without me, my product, whatever your product is, being in your business, life isn't as good as it could be. That's absence of value. What I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to hit pause. And I'd like you or you and your coworkers to start to try to write the things that the, your customer's facing, your ideal customer's facing, what their life is like, the problems they have without your, you or your product or your service being in their life. And you might think it's inconsequential. You might just think, look, their thermostat, you know, it goes on and off all the time. Okay, fine. Maybe it doesn't seem like it fits in the big picture, but talk about that. So try to list four to minimum, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that you think are indicators that somebody needs you but doesn't have you. Does that make sense? What are things that you can say, yeah, this person ought to be using us but isn't?
Okay? So hit pause if you can and write some of these down because you're going to need it for the rest of the video. Okay, so hopefully you're back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at those absence of value things and use them for the rest of the video. But let me go back to the point that I just made. It's really important that you begin as a salesperson to start to talk about things that way. If you can't get to absence of value in the conversation, at least start with use of value, how someone uses you, and avoid as much as possible source of value, the pitch that has to do with source. That's stuff that you can tell them when they think, oh, this is really interesting. How do I know you can pull it off? Well, we've been in business for 30 years. We've done it with this customer and that customer. We're financially sound. Great, but don't start with that. Start with how someone uses you, and preferably start with indicators someone can look for to know if they ought to be using you but aren't. Okay, so let's take those. Now I want what I want you to do, if you've got more than four, if you've got six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, um, let's take those and let's start to prioritize them. So I have a I have a bunch up here that I wrote down just, just kind of, I'll pretend I make a widget, okay? My widget um, makes, makes the manufacturing process faster. Um, when somebody doesn't use my widget, so what we'll see is that they're doing 35 units an hour, and they ought to be doing more like 50. Um, I'm looking at um, employee satisfaction. My widget is easier on the employees. They don't have as many late weekends. So the turnover rate ought to be industry average of 8%. And, uh, if it's higher than that, if it's like 15%, then you've got low employee satisfaction. This widget can help fix that. I've got things on there that you can see. There are a whole list of different things, tax rates and things, that I'm just making up. But they're, they're used as an example to see, look, I've got some pretty specific stuff that I'm looking for here that my widget fixes, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to pick the number, the, the top four things. One, two, three, four. You don't have, they don't have to be in direct order. Like, it doesn't matter which one's number one and which number's four. But the top four. So you've got to narrow this list down. So hit pause, go through them, look for things that are kind of the same, like, well, employee satisfaction and turnover rate are sort of the same, so let's just call it, you know, let's just call it employee satisfaction or, ha you know, overall happiness. Um, this is the same as that, so let's kind of combine those. That one doesn't matter as much. Come up with the top four, and you can go back and change this later, but for this exercise, you need to have four things that are really strong indicators that somebody needs you but doesn't have you. So let me say that another way. If you find out when you're given a referral or you're just at a business meeting and someone says, I have these four things going on, you you literally are like, holy cow, that is that is a golden, perfect um, opportunity for me because all four of those things I fix I can't even believe how much their life's going to be better if they'll just let me use my if they'll let me talk them into using my product because I really can help that person. So what are those four for you? So hit pause and come up with those and we'll come back to it. Okay, hopefully you you really have hit pause and really thought this through. Even if even if it's not perfect, it's a start. So here's the exercise in how to qualify. Again, qualifying really is about prioritizing your prospects first. And then later, it's about finding out ones early on, finding out which ones you should and should not work with. And hopefully, you'll be doing enough business and things will be going fast enough. You'll be closing enough deals that you're, you're okay sort of not working with a couple of them that are not as qualified as the others. But no matter what, we're going to qualify which ones are good and which ones aren't. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. I want you to take a piece of paper in front of you, and I want you to draw a giant plus sign, kind of like a compass, north, south, east, west. Just draw a giant plus sign, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to pretend that that's actually four different lines. We're going to make the center zero, so we'll put a zero in the center, and then at the top of each line we're going to put a ten. So where north would be, right? We're going to put a ten. Where east would be, we'll put a ten. South ten, west ten. So now what I have are four, even though it's a big plus sign, there's actually four distinct lines from 0 to 10, and I'm going to use each one of those to measure the four attributes that we talked about. So I'd like you to take those four attributes and put one at the at the head of each one of those lines where the 10 would be. So um, in my example here, you can see I'm going to put the tax rate at, the t at where north would be. I'm going to put my square foot um, 
a measurement metric over here on the right where east would be. Then at the bottom, I'm going to put employee satisfaction. And on the uh, where west would be on the left, I'm going to put customer loyalty. Now what you can see is that I've got this graph from 0 to 10 on four different attributes. And what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to have to make a couple of these charts. So if you can kind of shorthand what the what they are, it's, it's faster. You don't have to write it as many times. But we're going to try to think back to some of the prospects that you've worked with in the past. And we're going to see where they fit. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to think as a group or as a person, think of a prospect that you tried to close that didn't go so well. It'd be really great, especially if you can think of one you wanted to close, you spent a lot of time with it, you just couldn't close them. Okay, and, and it's um, it's always nice as an added advantage if you thought they should have closed, but they just didn't agree with you. <laughs> like you thought, well, you know, that should have closed. I don't know why I did it. Okay, so think of that person. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to sign as a number from 0 to 10 for each one of these attributes for that particular customer. So for your first attribute, ask yourself, scale of 0 to 10, 0 being not at all, 10 being the very most, where were they on this particular attribute? So, you know, I have something very specific like my tax rate. So I'm looking, I'm looking at, uh, they had an 18% tax rate on gross profit. Well, that's way higher than it should be, so that's, you know, a 9 or I'm looking at someone who had a 2%, so that's way lower than it should be, so that's a 1 or a 2. Okay? So work your way around. I'm just going to use my example, and generally when I think of someone that didn't close, they were probably doing okay with each one of these attributes. So I'm going to do 2s and 3s and 4s of kind of the person. So, you know, they were doing okay with their taxes, their employee satisfaction was okay, their ratio was okay. It wasn't great, but it was all right. Their customer loyalty is not fantastic, but it's not bad either. You know, it's about industry average, so I'll give that one a five. Okay, so now I've got this diamond. If I connect those points, I've got this diamond. So connect the points. And I've got this area that if you look at it in comparison to the whole chart, it's obvious that there wasn't a lot of opportunity. Visually, you can look at this customer and see how qualified they were. It's pretty small. It's what I call a small diamond or a little diamond. When you have a little diamond, when you have a small diamond, what that's telling you is their life is pretty okay without you. They don't need their life, they don't need their company to, um, they don't need you and their company for it to go okay. It's, it's pretty much okay, at least for the things that you touch. Now I want you to think of somebody you closed and it was a great deal and you're stoked about it and it was an awesome, awesome one, okay? And I want you to go back through. So for me, I'm going to go more with the guy that had the 18% tax rate. It was horrific. He shouldn't have been paying that. He's had a really high risk, really low employee satisfaction. I'm going to probably keep the customer loyalty about the same. You know, it's not. It may be a little worse than industry average, but they're not doing too bad. It's just internally they're a mess. It's costing them a fortune. So I'll put that as a seven, right? So now when I connect those four dots, I also have a diamond. But as you can see, you know, on your page as well, I'm willing to bet. A much bigger diamond and as I always tell people I don't know if you've ever tried to get married but it's a lot easier with a big diamond than it was with a small diamond <laughs> uh, the um, jo joking aside th this bigger diamond is much more likely to marry you this is to do business with you because they have the problems that you happen to fix and you've just gone through this exercise of moving away from the selfish point of view of pitching on source of value and starting to pitch on absence of value and saying, in the absence of me, these are the problems you face. And guess what? Here's somebody that had those problems. And if you go back and look at the people that were easy to close, that were good deals, that didn't bicker on price, wasn't very competitive, almost all of them are going to be big diamonds. In fact, that's one of the ways that you know that you have the four attributes right, is that you're able to to cor closely correlate the size of the diamond to the easiness of the deal to close. So the bigger the diamond, the more likely they are to close. I have a couple rules. One of my rules is that I don't ever deal with anyone unless they're at least a six on those attributes. That's just my personal filter, my personal you know line in the sand. Some people make it a four. It just depends on how many deals you have. But if they're not a six on each of my own for my, for Selemental, for my company, I, I don't work with them because I can't help them enough 
for it to be worthwhile for both of us. I, if I'm going to work with someone, I really, really want to help them. So they feel like they're really getting their money's worth. I feel like it's a job that was worthwhile. They're happy. I'm happy. You get the point? It's going to be the same with you. So my, one of my rules is that you have to have a number. For me, it's six, but you pick your number. I recommend six. The second thing is this is an and thing. It's attribute one and attribute two and attribute three and attribute four. It's not... Well, they are. Um, they have a really high tax rate, but their employees are fine, their customers are fine, and their other thing is sort of okay. No, they have to be all four of these things. They have to have four problems. If they don't have all of these, if it's not and, 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 they tend to not be a very qualified customer. We're really looking for the perfect storm here, the person that we can really help. And this diamond is a visual way to look at that. It's a simple way that you can start to think, okay, do they have these four things on a scale of 0 to 10? Where would I put it? Obviously, you don't know if it's an 8 or a 9 or a 7, but you know it's more than a 6, right? So you know, you know directionally that it's correct, and you can figure this out. All right. So the next step then, next step for your homework here while we're doing this video, is for you to, to pause and try to figure out for each one of the attributes that you've chosen, the four things that you've chosen, what are three or four or five at the most, but three or four questions that you can ask that help you to determine what their score ought to be, right? So, you know, let's look at the number of, of, of air conditioning units they have, um, how old they are, whether or not, uh, what was the initial capital investment, right? Um, or look at the wiring, you know, how many, how much square footage, uh, is it all um, 120, is it 220, 110 or 220? I feel like Mr. Mom, uh, 220, 225, whatever. Uh, I is what What's the electrical requirements and how are they doing that? Figure that out. What are the questions you can ask? that help you to figure out where they fit on that one attribute. And then start to kind of figure out, okay, if I hear this, then I'm going to score it high, and if I hear this, I'm going to kind of score it low, pardon me. That's that's something you want to kind of get in your head. And then do that with each one of these. What are two or three or four or five at the very most? You don't want to have a ton of questions here, but two or three or four questions that you can ask for each one of these attributes that help you to determine where should I, Mr. or Mrs. Salesperson, score this person on this particular attribute. Okay, hit pause and go do that. Okay, we're back. Qualifying is the act right now of trying to prioritize our deals. Later, hopefully, the low-end deals will drop off, but let's not get too freaked out about that. Let's just qualify so we know where to spend most of our time. The second thing is that we want to look for people that have problems we can solve, and we want to talk about those. These are the absence of my value kinds of conversations, not the source of my value conversations. We're going to pick the four best ones, the four most important ones that might change over time, but this is what we think they are right now, and we're going to graph them. And if they're and, 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 and they're at least a six on each one of those, then I know I have a big diamond. The bigger the diamond, the more likely they are to buy. So that's somebody that I'm going to spend a lot of time with. It's an easy way to you know, rank this customer as you're starting to think about them. Definitely take that person golfing because they're, they're all 10s or they're all 9s. This other person is a 6, 7, 6, 8. And so that's a good diamond, but they're not as big a deal as the all 9s who happens to be $5,000 a month. Okay? So that's the next thing. Now we have some questions, hopefully, that are at least a start of when you're talking to this person, what are some things you can ask when you first meet them or you first have your um, invitation to them that help you determine where you they are on this graph, right? So now I can score people. And you'll get to do this really easy. You'll be offhand. You'll build a new problem. In fact, I have several customers that actually go sit on the, at the customer's site and get on their whiteboard and draw a big this plus sign or do it on a piece of paper and they say I can help a lot of people and a lot of people I can't but for something like this that you probably haven't spent a lot of time with I can tell you that I can really make a huge difference for you depending on how you answer these questions so I'm gonna do a 0 to 10 on several attributes and let's talk about where you fit and then they have the customer score it and they say well what about this and what about this and what about this okay I feel like that's kind of a 7 or an 8 what do you think and the customers know it's definitely an 8 
and then you kind of work your way through it. At the end of it, the cu- you and the customer both go, look, you know, I appreciate the time. It looks like you don't really have a lot of need that I can make a big difference on. So um, thanks anyway, right? I'll do an aside here. Put a little parenthesis there because there's something important about that point in a second that I'll come back to. Or the person says, you're right, I'm eights and nines here. And I, I didn't really think that was a problem, but if you're telling me that's a problem and you can make my life easier, yeah, walk my roofs, go to my building, you're in all my rooms, look everything over, come back with an analysis because you're right. I mean, it, they were my numbers, and I was the one that told you I'm all eights and nines, so I obviously have a problem. Tell me how to fix it. Uh, you don't really have to do that with the customer, but it's not a bad idea, and it certainly is effective for them to um, – participate in this the key thing though is if somebody's not sixes you're probably not going to close them because you really can't help them that much so be really careful how much time you spend with these small diamonds okay all right here's the final point this is what's really important i know you get hammered about referrals right i know you get hammered about it I can tell you that I agree completely with all of the hammering that you're taking about get referrals, get referrals, get referrals. They're extremely important. They really matter. They they help you get to this conversation faster. Just getting a referral doesn't mean they're going to be more qualified, but it does give you an in. You can get a meeting better. It's really helpful. But I also understand where you come from, that it's kind of awkward that you're kind of asking them to do you a favor when they really have no reason to do you a favor because you kind of owe them, they don't owe you. And I get that. I was telling a group of managers that were saying, we need our reps to do more um, referrals. I was saying, you got to understand, I agree with you, but you got to understand it's kind of like going on a first date and saying, thanks for coming out with me. Um, Before we get started, do you mind giving me a list of six people that might want to go out with me, (laughs) you know, after our date's done? (laughs) And they all laughed. But it's true. It's kind of like that. It's awkward. So here's where this parenthesis comes in. When some when you do the diamond with someone, when you can talk absence of value, you can explain to someone who you're looking for for a referral. So if the meeting doesn't go well and they're a small diamond, you can say to them very easily, now that you know who I can help, now that you know the kind of company that I really make a difference for, can you think of anyone that's in this situation? They have these four things going on. Boom, 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 and boom. If you Can you have anyone off the top of your mind? Okay, do you mind if I call you in like a month and just see if you've run into anyone that has those things? Because I'm telling you, I can't help you because you're not in that situation, but I can help people in this situation, and I, I'm really good at it. So can you think of anyone? So you can get a referral that way. Um, you can also get referrals. I, I don't typically, when the meeting goes well and I've got the next step, I don't typically ask for referrals right away. I'll do that later on in the sales process. But I want to keep at the forefront the four things that I really change, that I make better, so that when I do ask for a referral, they know right away who to go for. And this is also good when I'm working with someone who's not a prospect because these are people that I can say, hey, um, if you if you ever run into anyone that has this going on or this going on, would you send them my way? If you can't tell them absence of value stuff, then you're not going to get anywhere. If you say, oh, yeah, if you ever run into a company that's like 200 employees and it's got two offices, can you send them my way? They're going to be like, oh, boy. They're just, you're not going to get a referral. They're going to try, and even if they're your friend. But if you say, if you're ever in a, a, a customer site and you see a bunch of um, space heaters under everyone's desks, would you give me their name because I can help them because that's a problem. Or if you're ever in a, um, you know, in a in a meeting with a bunch of salespeople and they're all complaining because they have this great product but no one will listen to them. Could you give them my name because I can help them get people to talk to them. You got to give them something specific. So absence of value is a very powerful tool because one, it helps you talk to the customer in a way that they understand. Two, it gets you right to qualifying quickly and three it helps you get referrals the secret to getting referrals is knowing how to tell people what to look for they're not going to remember you know uh, we do this kind of service and we have these products and they're not going to remember that but they are going to remember to look for people that have space heaters or they are going to remember to look for um, people that have you know more than five air conditioning units on their on the roof or they are going to remember to look for data centers that are constantly getting, um, you know, or medical centers that are constantly getting uh, regulators coming there because it's not the air is not clean enough, right? So, 
absence of value does that for you as well. Okay, you might want to go back through this again. I try to repeat things a lot so that you don't. I also want you to call me or email me or use this booking thing to book some time with me, and I will absolutely happily walk you through these things and help you figure them out. I hope if you do nothing else that you start to trend your conversation towards absence of value because if you do nothing else and just talk that way, you'll find people, you'll qualify them right away just because they say, I don't have those problems, or they say, yeah, I've got those problems, and it makes the conversation so much easier. If you do only two things, I hope you'll do that plus find a way to talk about referrals because that will have a huge impact. And if you really, if you really want to make a difference in your pipeline and see things move more quickly, come up with these attributes for the diamond. It's homework. It's hard. You got to work through it, but you can do it. You get it done. You know, in the time that we're on this video, it's not going to be that hard. Like you know, it's not weeks worth of work. It's an hour's worth of work. You can get that done. And like I said, call me and we'll work it through together. Um, and turn, figure out these diamonds, figure out these questions, and then start asking people this. It's different than the way you're doing it today, I'm sure, but it does give you a really good way of thinking of things. And if your company, if your branch office or whatever starts talking about your deals as, as the size of the diamond, hey, this is a big diamond, ah, it was a small diamond, it's a really quick way to communicate everything that needs to be communicated about that company. And um, it's also a powerful tool for your marketing team because they'll start to see you're running into a lot of people that have this. How can the marketing team help you find more of those? Because that's part of your big diamond. Okay, Matthew Lampros, there's my contact information. I, I'm always so grateful to have the opportunity to work with you guys. And, um, I, you know, contact William if you need anything. He's always around to help. He's really fantastic, and he has all my contact information. Or contact me as well, and, and we'll work out how to, how to help you out, okay? Take great care. Good luck. Talk to you soon.